things that's difficult about growing in faith is that it's often suffering and darkness that leads us to spiritual growth. And none of us likes to suffer. But I believe that that's why God allows it. And there are some great scriptures in this session about how suffering and darkness can lead us to spiritual growth. So God allows difficulty to grow our faith. You know, a psalm I want to give you that you might want to jot down if you're going through a hard time is Psalm 131. It's actually a psalm of David. And David describes his soul as a weaned child. He's waiting for God's answer, and he says, like a weaned child is my soul within me. And I started thinking about that, what it means to have a weaned soul. Most of us, when we were babies, we were weaned at some point. And I know this because I have never seen an adult breastfeeding. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> the fact is, every single one of us have been withheld from something we wanted from someone who loved us for the purpose of our growth. And I believe that sometimes God does that in our life so that we will grow in our understanding of him and in our faith in him. Psalm 131 talks about having a weaned faith so that you can learn to trust God even if you can't see what he's doing. And God is using our waiting periods not only to work within us, but also to line things up around us. And that's why we have to trust him. God is more concerned with what happens in us than what happens to us. Now, it's not that he's not concerned about our circumstances. He is. But you know what, you guys? He's more concerned with how you respond to your circumstances because he's at work in you. See, this life is not the end of the story. And he is going to use everything in your life to make you the person that he is dreaming you to be. He doesn't want you just to get to heaven. He wants you to be different when you get there. That's his purpose for you. I reference a book in 40 Verses called Hope for the Flowers, and it's about two caterpillars named Stripe and Yellow who meet and become friends. And eventually, they go to join this quest to reach the sky, which is actually a pile of caterpillars. And so they jump in the pile and they start climbing up to the top, and eventually Yellow realizes the futility of what they're doing. So she sadly leaves Stripe, and she leaves the pile. And she makes her way eventually to a tree, and she finds another caterpillar who is actually spinning a cocoon. And so she asks him about what he's doing. And I want to read you that scene in the book, because I think it's a perfect illustration of what sometimes God is calling us to do. And if I decide to become a butterfly, says Yellow to the caterpillar, what do I do? Watch me. I'm making a cocoon. It looks like I'm hiding, I know, but a cocoon is no escape. It's an in-between house where the change takes place. It's a big step since you can never return to caterpillar life. During the change, it will seem to you or to anyone who might peek that nothing is happening. But the butterfly is already becoming. It just takes time. I think that perfectly represents those time periods where we're called to wait and we don't see what God is doing. We have to trust that in the darkness and in the waiting, God is at work. God is growing our faith. That's the big story of what's going on when we're called to wait and trust. And one day we will meet him face to face and we will get to spend eternity with him. And then we'll understand those time periods so much more. And while we're called to those seasons, it's helpful when we look at scriptures that can encourage us when we're in the wait. I remember the days of long ago. I meditate on all your works and consider what your hands have done. I spread out my hands to you. My soul thirsts for you like a parched land. Notice that David looks back. 
such an important thing to do. God is always saying, remember, remember, remember. And don't we forget all the time? The Israelites walk through a body of water. They make it to the other side, and within months they're going, if only we could go back to Egypt. And of course, we laugh at them. How could they do that? I mean, they saw a sea part. But let's just think about our own lives. We forget all the time how faithful God is. And we have to be reminded. Do you know that God had the Israelites actually build stone altars when they were walking around everywhere? And every time you came to a place and you saw a stone altar, a pile of stones, you knew God had been in that place. Well, what are your stone altars? Maybe they're your journals. Maybe they're your songs, your worship songs. Where are your stone altars? Where do you remember God's faithfulness? Where do you remember God's faithfulness when you're in a season in the dark? That is so important to do when you don't see what God is doing. Take some time and think about what you do to make it through the waiting and the suffering that sometimes you're called to do.